Hello cuties! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelsey and I'm here to read books that are like The Last of Us. So if you, not that this is a series, but I will leave a link up above to the first episode of this like video concept that I'm doing where I'm reading books that remind others of my favorite video games. So the first installment I did was to read books that were like Life is Strange. That was one of my favorite episodic video games and a video game that got me super into loving them again, loving longer form video games um, because I tend to like shorter form. But this was the first time that I was like, devoted to um, a story of a video game and that is for The Last of Us. Definitely I am inspired by my little Pedrito, Pedro Pascal, Daddy 5000. Um, Rooms out all night so you can scream my name as loud as you need to sugar. And it reinvigorated something within me and my love of The Last of Us. So I decided why not? It just ended. I'm needing that stuff again. I need that story. I need to consume it. So why not find a bunch of books that remind me of The Last of Us? So I went online, scoured the internet, and I think I found the best books that kind of encompass specific elements of the plot or vibes overall of the story. So when you think of The Last of Us, you think of that parent-kid dynamic while there's this some sort of journey going on. So immediately I thought of The Road by Cormac McCarthy. This is a story that follows a father and his son as they kind of navigate throughout a desolate America. And because this is kind of an apocalyptic dystopian future, um, there's a lot of bands and tribes of people that are scavenging for food and whatnot and this father is trying to stay with his son only and live life on their own which is very reminiscent of Joel and Ellie's characters. Joel is very reluctant to find help. Joel is very reluctant to join other communities. Sometimes he's right and his like main goal is to protect Ellie throughout the game as they navigate this desolate version of the United States as well. I read this book probably 10 years ago now when I was studying for a literature degree and I can't say that I enjoyed it but I was also like a really really big stoner so maybe I just didn't like appreciate this for what it was and did I even understand what I was reading probably not so I decided to re-give this a chance it's a lot of people's favorite books um and I feel kind of stupid that I hate this book like so much when I you know, I wasn't all there when I was reading it. So I'm definitely going to be rereading this and hopefully gathering that same experience that I love and crave from The Last of Us. The next book that has kind of that theme is The Wanderers, but this also has that zombie-like atmosphere of the book as well. So this follows a girl named Shana who wakes up one morning to discover her little sister is in the grip of a strange malady. She appears to be sleepwalking, she cannot talk and cannot be woken up, and she is heading with inexorable, Jesus, do I have a literature degree or what? Determination to a destination that only she knows. But Shanna and her sister are not alone. Soon they are joined by a flock of sleepwalkers from across America on the same mysterious journey. And like Shanna, there are other shepherds who follow the flock to protect their friends and family on the long dark road ahead. So we definitely have that family dynamic, one person wanting to desperately protect another and the younger one needing to go to a specific destination. And also this like zombie atmosphere where they're not really understanding What's going on with the people who are sleepwalking. People who are sleepwalking are kind of given a one mind mentality where they have kind of one goal together which is very reminiscent of the zombies, the infected of The Last of Us. This is more towards the show, this hive mind ideology that the roots of the infected and the environment are all linked together. Um, so I'm very excited to see how Chuck handles this. It's the thickest book um, on the docket um, with over 600 pages um so i will definitely be listening to this on audio and it is the book that i will be starting today so i'm very very excited this is like an anticipated read for me of a backlist so really looking forward to this and then if we're sticking with that zombie theme one that came highly 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 recommended as similar is the girl with all the gifts by mr carrie i first heard about this book from my friend ness they really really love this book um when i see this book i only think of ness this follows from what I understand, a young girl who is infected with whatever version of zombiness 
is involved in this world. However, she is conscious or the children are conscious. Every morning, Melanie waits in her cell to be collected for class. When they come for her, Surgeon Parks keeps a gun pointing at her while two of his people strap her into a wheelchair. She thinks they don't like her. She jokes that she won't bite, but they don't laugh. <laughs> so I think that this will be really interesting. I'm relating this obviously to this zombie apocalypse, these humans trying to navigate a world where zombies are involved. Um, But also because, spoilers for the game and the show, I guess if you haven't watched it, but this is revealed with in the first episode and like the first like 10 minutes of the game but ellie is infected with whatever has infected the other individuals except she is conscious um she's not affected by what has infected them <laughs> by the cordyceps in the world this main character and ellie i think will have a lot in common and i'm very excited to read this i also know that it has a teacher dynamic with her as a student i think this teacher believes in this in the kids and that they are not the zombies that they're trying to interact with if i remember correctly reading a synopsis one time ago um so again we have that adult with a child and trying to save them dynamic and if we're going to talk about infected and what infected them when you think of the last of us when you think of those infected creepy sons of bitches you think of mushrooms and i was like i need to read a scary book that somehow involves mushrooms because i feel like that is intricate in understanding the lore of the last of us and understanding how the dynamics of the game work in particular and also if you watch the show how that background lore is integrated into why people became infected so what moves the dead by t king fisher i literally know nothing about this except that it involves mushrooms <laughs> When Alex Easton, a retired soldier, receives word that their childhood friend Madeline Usher is dying, they race to the ancestral home of the Ushers in the remote countryside of Ruritania. What they find there is a nightmare of fungal growths and possessed wildlife surrounding a dark, pulsing lake. Madeline sleepwalks. Oh, so that relates back to the wanderers look at us guys what a circle of life the box and speaks in strange voices at night and her brother Roderick is consumed by a mysterious malady of the nerves aided by a redoubtable British mycologist and a baffled American doctor Alex must unravel the secret of the house of Usher before it consumes them all oh yes this is also a retelling of Edgar Allan Poe's uh the fall of the house of Usher anyways mushrooms people being infected by the mushrooms fungal growth everywhere possess animals this relates to the cordyceps, I have a feeling. And then finally, when we think of zombie apocalypse, when we think of zombies in culture before The Last of Us, what did we think of? We thought of The Walking Dead. So I plan to read the first omnibus. I believe that it is the volumes one through six or nine, something like that. Um, And I plan to read that. I did read The Walking Dead probably when the first season had first come out. Um, I'm very, very, very into zombie media because i enjoy the symbolism of zombies and i enjoy this dystopian horrific landscape that people have to navigate um so the walking dead follows if you don't know a man named rick grimes who wakes up um after some sort of stint in the hospital he was in a coma and he wakes up to the world being destroyed by a zombie apocalypse i am very excited to return back to the walking dead i don't remember what volume i had stopped reading but i definitely didn't continue the walking dead series after i think the third season so i'm pretty like well versed in what happened in the beginning of the walking dead but there are obviously some details that i forgot so i'm very excited to get back in to the series um and then hopefully read the first omnibus if i can just get a couple of volumes in i'll be very interested in doing so i just want to reread the walking dead series again um just for fun <laughs> so that is it for now i am very excited to get into everything like i said i am planning to start the wanderers like literally after this clip and i will hopefully update you whenever i might also read a volume of the walking dead omnibus but you'll know you'll know i'll update you um i'm very excited for this i hope you could tell um i hope you like the last of us just as much first question of the vlog do you love pedro pascal has your life been consumed by that man because my life has um my love for dilfs is growing stronger every day i i just love him bella ramsey perfection i need to stop i need to stop gushing i need to just start this book see you later hello so i lied to you all um i thought that i had reserved the wanderers audiobook um but i reserved the ebook when i already had a physical so i put my request in my hold for the wanderers ebook no audiobook jesus and i'll be waiting for that but the audiobook for the road was available on script so i will be starting this right now um which makes the most sense i guess because it's the one that i'm 
the most familiar with, I guess. I also borrowed the ebook for The Walking Dead volume one um, of the first, what's it called? Oh my god, I feel so stoned right now. The compendium, the first volume of the first compendium, and I will be reading that as well. Um, so I'm gonna start this now. Hello, so it's quite early in the morning. Um, I have not had my coffee yet, but I do want to try this thing where I go to the gym a bit earlier in the morning. <laughs> um, but before I go, I wanted to talk about the stuff I read yesterday. So the first thing I read and finished was The Walking Dead Volume 1, Days Gone By. So I talked about the synopsis in the beginning of the vlog. This book follows Rick Grimes. He wakes up from a coma after being shot on duty and the world is not the same. <laughs> By a sheer form of luck and knowing that his wife would go to Atlanta to see her family. He ends up meeting them again um, and at the same time meeting a band of people <laughs> who are staying in the outskirts of Atlanta hoping for when the government like reconvenes and starts saving people that they will go to the cities first and find them in the outskirts in the forest. Rick is kind of thinking this is a bad place to stay, but his partner Shane, who was also with his wife, um, is kind of the pseudo leader of the group um, or established like leader of the group. And he really believes that the government is going to come save them. He really believes that this is the good place to stay. So there's obviously some tension there. And there's obviously some tension because Shane and Rick's wife got a little but I think it's more developed in the show. In the comic, it seems to have been like a one night stand. Um, and I totally, I totally understand her. Like you get your dues, girl. So the book is really similar to the show. It's, it's the reason I started reading the comics at the time. Um, I still remember so much from the comic, but also I don't remember anything. <laughs> when I'm reading it, I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. But like, what happened in this comic like if i would have told you yesterday my predictions um i would have had a general sense who dies in this volume don't remember because obviously to me they're all like a conglomerate of information something that i think was missing from this comic is um i really thought it was from the comics but i didn't see it anywhere in the panels but the don't like the don't dead open inside thing from the walking dead pilot um is so iconic and i can't believe it was from the show and not the comics. <laughs> Glenn is still like my favorite little baby um, from the group that they meet outside. In, well, actually Rick meets Glenn in Atlanta and that's how he finds the community. Um, and I still love Glenn. I think he works as this comedic relief type of character, but he's genuinely just a sweetheart and I know Glenn grows from here. I can't wait to continue reading because I know his relationships and his developments with other characters really goes off from here now that he is an established like friend of Rick. I love the discussions on human problems um, around a zombie apocalypse. The zombie apocalypse is kind of working to open up an entire slew of other problems and this is something that we also see in The Last of Us. Before I start making comparisons, my overall rating for this is definitely a five stars but it's based on nostalgia. Um, I, I love it. I love the series um, and I had to give it five stars because I was just so happy to be back in the world. I remember less and less as we're going to move forward in the comics. So I might judge those based on like actuality. They might be five stars, um, but this one was like a pure like nostalgia five stars that I was giving it. In regards to how it relates to The Last of Us, I think we're starting in solid grounds. We have a character, not that he's a reluctant hero because he was a police officer, um, but we have someone who's like joining with a group of people that he needs to protect, willingly, unwillingly taking on this role. I think he's more willing than Joel in a sense. Um, and obviously there's more people that he needs to, or feels the need to protect over just a child or one individual person. Rick Grimes is instead taking on this community leader role and leading a group of people and making decisions for a group of people. Obviously the discussions, as I mentioned, of zombies representing real life problems is there is evident in this book and like i said i will from now on probably be giving you the shorter readings for the books but i will make a 
bigger discussion on like the problem, the people comparison problems to The Last of Us once I finish the last volume, um, just so I can have the entire first arc, the first compendium as a basis for the relationship between the two um, forms of media. I also got 100 pages into uh, The Road by Cormac McCarthy. This obviously follows a father and his son as they traverse a apocalyptic desolate America, much like Joel and Ellie. Um, so far my thoughts are... I think what I didn't like about this book originally was definitely the writing style. Um, it's very bland, straightforward. There's no real metaphorical or lyrical writing. It is a man talking about his day and he's like, my son did this, I did this. When I have a memory of the past about my wife, I think about her nipples and also the fact that she died. And that's it, that's all, <laughs> that's all we're getting. But I am, I think, enjoying it a bit more because I'm mostly understanding the like desolate, and disgusting feelings that the father has towards the world but his overwhelming need to protect his son. If I was living in a zombie apocalypse, I don't have this need to survive, which I think is really interesting from these forms of media because these are all like men that want to survive and therefore placing that onto other people and wanting to help them survive, right? Um, that's not me, but I understand how hopeless the father feels because his one goal or his one need, and he says it very often, he's like, that's my job. That's my job. I need to protect my son. That's my job. I think that that's really interesting. I'm definitely feeling more of that sense of desperation and depression that I didn't get from my first read, obviously, because I was major stoner. So right now I would say that this is related to The Last of Us, definitely. Um, there is that sense of desperation, of trying to just make this child live because the child is like a representation of the future. The child is a representation of what could be, what we need the world to be. The boy and Ellie have, well, I, I guess Ellie always worked as like an image of the future, but this boy in particular is an image of the future. But the apocalypse in this book is, I personally think, so much more desolate so far. And I don't remember this so please take this with a grain of salt. I don't think there are zombies in this book. The apocalypse is very unclear and I find with The Walking Dead, with The Road, and with The Last of Us, you don't necessarily find out why these things started. So in The Last of Us, we know that it's a cordyceps fungal virus. Um, in the show, it explains it a bit more. They've added their own type of lore. In The Walking Dead, at this point in volume one, we don't know, the survivors don't know, nobody knows how the zombie apocalypse started. In here, we get glimpses, but it seems to be a more realistic end of the world. I'm thinking it has something to do with either like a meteor shower or a nuclear fallout. I'm not 100% sure how I feel, but it's definitely a lot of people dead, a lot of the world is destroyed, and there's a lot of natural disasters happening due to whatever happened before. And the father in this book talks about like the a flash of light in the sky, the power being out, both of which could be meteor strikes or a nuclear fallout. So we'll see if it develops. I don't think it does. I don't remember it ever being explained. I am enjoying it a bit more than I did. <laughs> So as for what I'm going to do today, I will be going to the gym, like I said, I'm gonna work on these muscles, then I will come back, work a bit probably on my lunch, I will continue a bit of the road. Today I also plan to read the second volume in the first compendium, um, I forget what it's called, but I will tell you later, of The Walking Dead Volume 2. So I am coming to you 
with an update that I finished the road. Surprisingly, I ended up um, giving this a much higher rating for my one star that I rated it in my early university days. I settled on giving this a four stars because I'm really conflicted about my feelings towards this book. I didn't enjoy the reading experience of this book, but it is the intent to not enjoy the plot because there is no plot. It is just a story of a dad and his son traveling across the United States to find heat, to find shelter, to, to just basically survive. And it's not supposed to be the most plot engaging book. I really appreciated actually one factor of the book is that you never know what happened. It is literally just the present time of what is going on with a father and son and what the dad is thinking. It's literally, it. it's set out to do what it's set out to do. It's successful in that. So I can't be mad that I didn't enjoy being depressed for a six hour audiobook. I really can't fault it for that. So I settled on giving it a four stars. I don't think I could give it a complete five stars. There are some things that I could be nitpicky about in the book. Like I really don't like the way the father thinks about and refers to his wife and how he describes her. But like, I also understand because he has been alone and like, he like has nothing to think about but his, the beauty of his wife so like i get it i also like hated obviously that the writing is so simple and that the dialogue within the book is the most boring thing to read ever but also what do they have to talk about they don't have anything to talk about so like i think this book was really successful in what it set out to do if we talk about its relation to the last of us i think there's a lot there that's similar the apocalypse we don't know what happened in this book but there's definitely no mentions of zombies there is mentions of cannibalism and cannibals and there's one scene in this fucking book that i don't remember reading if i read that when i was high that would be ingrained in my frontal lobe i would never forget that so I don't think I read that part. <laughs> I don't think I read this book, I'll be honest. Because I think I thought it was so boring that I DNF'd it even though it was for school. <laughs> There's definitely that feeling of the end of the world. There's definitely that feeling of a father protecting or a father figure protecting a younger individual who doesn't really understand what's going on or doesn't understand the desolence of the world. And also this understanding that the father is kind of lying to his son in the last of us you know that joel in the end ends up lying to ellie which i think is a really sad scene but it's also kind of prevalent for the way that i think a father figure would act in this type of world so yeah i settled on like four stars for this i ended up really enjoying it more than i thought i would very happy i reread this i'm very happy i picked it up because i really thought i was going to hate it i have to edit my march wrap up um which i just finished recording and i want to post it tomorrow so i might do the majority of the editing tonight and i think i'm only gonna pick up the walking dead volume two and then tomorrow we could pick between the three books i'm really disappointed because i thought that my the wanderers audiobook was gonna come in and it still hasn't come in yet so the three people that are at my bank and listening to the audiobook hurry up i do have the audiobook for both what moves the dead and the girl with all the gifts so i think it's just a matter of deciding later what i feel like reading okay bye hello welcome to day two i just got back from the gym this morning i wanted to update you because last night i finished both volume two and volume three of the walking dead i don't know if i want to talk or review them individually because i pretty much feel the same about every single one so i think i'm going to stick with finishing volume one we reviewed it the other day we know what happened we know how i feel about it and then once i get to the end of this arc volume eight how do I feel about this entire installment as a whole and then compare that to The Last of Us and if we see the similarities, which we already know that um, there's obviously very major similar similarities just because it is a zombie book. I feel like I could have definitely done just volume one, but I'm having so much fun like revisiting the comics and I'm excited to see like where I personally stopped because I feel like I read a lot of the comics and I'm not realizing how much I read because yet last night I read volume three and I was like the minute like they entered the prison complex in volume three um, or season three of the show, I remembered it vividly. Like I was like, I have been here before. I know what happens. I was waiting for that gruesome scene that occurs if you read it or watched the show actually i don't think it happens in the show no it's just in the comic but it was so vivid that i remembered it like immediately um so today i still don't have my audiobook for wanderers by chuck wendig the three people that are hogging it let's go speed beating 
Come on, people enjoying their books at a slow pace. What a concept. I'm also uploading my March wrap up, which will go up before this. So I'll just self plug a little bit um, and just know that it's up above if you missed it. And that's it. I'm probably going to eat a little bit. It's close to lunch time by this point. Maybe um, during my lunch, I'll read The Walking Dead volume four because I really want to. <laughs> so who's gonna stop me? So I decided for lunchtime since I ate roughly 45 minutes ago. I think I'm going to read volume four of The Walking Dead. I'm just having so much fun. I know that this is the volume I think where Michonne is introduced and I really like her. So I kind of just want to get into it. I'm like running on the high of The Walking Dead. I did peek at reviews um because i was like what is this one about blah 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 people did not like this volume <laughs> or at least like the friends i have on goodreads have not liked this volume like well roundedly everybody gave it like two stars i'm not the best at being a critical reader of things that i really enjoy so i think i might like it a bit more but i may not we never know so i'm going to read volume four on my lunch break um, and we'll see what happens. My queen! I just finished my work day for the day. <laughs> and I wanted to come on here and talk about, I know I said I wasn't going to talk about The Walking Dead volumes individually. But volume four was atrocious. I gave it two stars. And it definitely falls in line with the reviews that I've seen from other people. I remember what happened in this volume when I was reading it, but I have a lot of issues with this volume because there's a lot of things that I want to talk about, but I don't want to get into spoilers about it. So I'm going to kind of be like vague about it. Um, But there's a lot of things in this issue that I think Robert Kirkman is trying to include because he's trying to make it seem like the real world is still, like those problems are still embedded even when there's a zombie apocalypse going on. And I think that that was really effectively done in the first three volumes, but I think it kind of fell through in this volume because the pacing of the volumes is still a major issue that I have. So a lot of things are happening quick and some of the issues in this one came to like a lot of drama and because of that quick pacing of the book it feels repetitive it felt annoying I was like rolling my eyes at the drama especially with Carol's character she really disappointed me in this one and I understand what Robert Kirkman is doing because he's trying to show that like mentally they are not doing well they are really struggling with adapting to living together they're struggling with the world not being the way that it was before Robert Kirkman is including like racist characters and while I understand again that Robert Kirkman wants like the real world issues to still be involved in the book I don't think the level of bluntness that he included in the book is his place in a way as a white man. I think there should have been more nuance to it rather than this direct bluntness that he's including um, without getting into spoilers really. I also think the show does the female characters better because there were women in the writing team and women that were kind of making the characters that we see in the comic more powerful in a way or, or at least that they have more agency in their actions which is definitely apparent that they do not in the book this volume definitely felt like it was written by a 12 year old boy and then also this idea that the women made this decision that they feel safer with the men in charge and they have no women on their like new democratic council and it's just the men that are deciding things for them because they want to feel protected i just think personally um it is not the most like effective way of showing this democratic leadership. However, the ending conversation that they have where Rick is telling them that like the world isn't going to go back to normal, that we have to establish this new idea of the world the way it is and like adapt to the way it is was really effective. I think it's one of the more memorable scenes of the comic. Um, But yeah, I really had a lot of problems with this. I'm genuinely surprised, Um, but I should have known just by following people's reviews as I'm reading the comics and seeing how everybody went from like four and five star reviews to a two star that this was going to be worse than I thought it was. Um, Hopefully there won't be anything as jarring for the next four volumes because again I do really just want to rate this as a whole but I needed to like get my thoughts out on that volume because I think it was like genuinely jarring. So now what I think I'm going to do is start these books. Wanderers, we're not going to talk about it. Um, The people in my library are being ridiculous, I think. So I think what I'm gonna do, I decided that I will be picking up this one and listening to it. Genuinely, I'm super excited. Um, this, like I said, is one of my friend Ness's favorite books. I've only heard them like rave about this book and I really, really wanna read it. Um, I remember when the trailer for the movie came out, it looked really good. So I'm very excited to pick this up and see how I feel about it. So 
I will see you later. Hello, so as mentioned yesterday, I did in fact start The Girl With All The Gifts. This is taking place in a post apocalyptic zombie universe as with most of the stuff I'm reading and it follows a young girl named Melanie um, and she is in this compound with a bunch of other children except that these children are strapped to their chairs by their heads by their legs and by their arms and you don't really understand why but I think if you acknowledge that this is a zombie book you can understand why they are being strapped down. I am now 150 pages into this. So you do end up learning that the children are different than the regular zombies in the book. So they refer to the zombies as the hungries, which is fucking creepy, um, but this is from the perspective of a child. So like, just keep that in mind. The hungries are not able to look or think about anything else besides eating human flesh. Through some gatherings of the adults talking around Melanie, you're able to gather that they are different. Like they are able to perceive the world. They are talking with their teachers, they're learning, and they are part of this program because there is a psychologist and a scientist. The scientist biologist is cutting open these children to see the differences in their brains and the psychologist is teaching them to see if they are able to talk be taught if they are able to learn and you see that this teacher starts to believe that they are still children and melanie is special in a way but i think she's more rather the only one that's given an opportunity to do so the similarities to the last of us are absolutely nuts so we'll get into what i have found so far so the virus stems from cordyceps in mushrooms Again, very similar to The Last of Us, what happened in The Last of Us, how the zombie apocalypse started there, or rather the infected apocalypse, because they never called them zombies. People still alive inside with mushrooms controlling them. So that is the basis that the biologist doctor uses because obviously she's cutting up children. So she needs to have some sort of distance from them. Repeatedly says like, they are not children, they are just a mushroom, a fungal infection controlling the child. Obviously she needs to say that because she's doing horrible things. And I think that that's interesting because Melanie is showing that there is still something within the person even if that fungal infection that mushroom is controlling her which is similar to The Last of Us there are many scenes in the video game where you can hear the infected crying and gagging because they are still like inside they're just being controlled by a fungal infection which I think is horrendous and disgusting they seem to be playing on the same type of theme although in The Last of Us we are obviously not following the mind of someone who's infected child could be different from the others they're implying at this point um that she could be a cure much like with ellie and therefore the adult is hell-bent on saving that child very similar to joel and ellie with uh miss justino and melanie so a lot of similarities i'm actually like i was listening to this last night on audio and i was like oh my god i'm not ready for this again but i am because obviously i wanted to read books that are like the last of us and this one so far has been the most <laughs> like the last of us so i'll be continuing this uh today when i'm done work i also have a few errands to run um but otherwise see you later hello so it's the morning of monday i didn't update all weekend pretty much because i like barely read but i did end up finishing the girl with all the gifts um and i gave this four stars i really enjoyed it i know i updated at the like 150 page mark but then i like absolutely flew through this book i went into this not knowing anything about the story structures the characters the plot like with most zombie stories we definitely dive into this discussion about who is the bigger horror right the zombies or the humans but i think this goes into a far more interesting philosophical debate that i haven't really seen in zombie media at least to this point the philosophical discussions that we're kind of having in this book revolve around the discussions we would have around ai type of thing and i don't want to get too into it but it's really a discussion about what makes humans really humans like where is the fine line between something that can think for themselves and learn and grow and what we know as humans it's told from four perspectives and i found all four perspectives to be really interesting and they all have a sort of different understanding of the way the world works or the way that the world should work and an understanding of the hungries of the zombies none of them felt random like I, I was always happy to be in their chapters because i really felt like we were learning and diving into new things my one complaint though is that i couldn't give this book a five star due to the overall pacing of the novel i think there are many moments that could have been eliminated a lot of them just added to the slower pacing of the book and 
I think if they would have been not there, it wouldn't have changed the overall structure and timeline of the novel. But wow, did this impress me. I highly recommend it. Um, I had a lot of fun with this one. In terms of how it relates to The Last of Us, I think there's definitely some interesting discussions that we can talk about. So it's the idea of children being immune to the cordyceps, what that leads for the future of humanity if more people are immune to the cordyceps. Obviously, we have this adult figure that wants to take care of the child that they're kind of thrusted into having parental relationship in a way. We definitely have the people who think for science and think for the greater good of humanity over the one child that could be the cure. Obviously the zombies are there. Um, the way that it starts, the cordyceps, being related to The Last of Us, I thought was really creepy. I, I can't believe that this was an idea that was thought of multiple times. I think that's more scary because to me, if more people think about this, it makes it more plausible. And as we've seen in like science developments um, in the last couple of months, fungal systems have been adapting to hot temperatures and it's really scary. Um, but other than that, I think it was really, really good. Um, it doesn't have Pedro Pascal Joel in it, but you know, we take what we can get. In another update, we finally got the audiobook for The Wanderers. This chunker, I just wanted to finish it first. And at last, it is one of the last books I'm reading. Yesterday, I just really started it. So I got to page 50. Um, and so far, it's really interesting. Uh, the zombie zombies have started in Pennsylvania. So they are known as the sleepwalkers right now because they are walking seemingly to one direction um, and joining other sleepwalking people to reach a specific location and they cannot be stopped. The main character, Shanna, tries to stop her sister and her sister violently like tries to get out of Shanna's hands, almost like as though she's having a violent seizure. Um, and obviously that breaks Shanna's heart. She doesn't want to do this to her sister, so she lets her continue walking. The police have gotten involved right now, so I'm going to see how this develops. I don't have a very heavy work day today, so I could definitely listen to this on audio while I'm working. And I also plan on going to the library today just to update my um library card because it's expired <laughs> um and hoopla only lets me take out six books a month i can't take out the last two volumes of the walking dead and they have it at my library as an ebook but because it's been expired and i haven't gone to replace it i'm going to do that just so i can have the last two books because i just think it's silly to end the arc because hoopla only lets me take out six things a month i think that's silly so that's what i'll be doing today hello so i have to make a trip uh, out of the house new locations for vlogs but i have to go to the library to renew my library card because they were really pushing it with covid um and now that things are semi going back to normal they're like okay no it's expired and you need to come renew it in order to pull out those walking dead comics from the other montreal bibliothèque that i am a part of i need to get this done so come with me to the library maybe we'll get the physical copies of these books and i don't know maybe show you around i don't know what i'm gonna do we're gonna be spicy and fresh Hello, so I am home. I am making spaghetti and meatballs. And I wanted to talk about how I got about 230 pages into Wanderers. So far, so good. It's following a very st stereotypical zombie plot. What I think was interesting is that they are trying to figure out like why these people or what is controlling these people's bodies like why are they walking somewhere that nobody knows and nobody seems to be able to like control them not to do that and obviously the idea of cordyceps came up um i'd be very interested to see if that is the fucking theme of this book because i literally thought the last of us were geniuses and now i'm like no maybe i'm just dumb and i i don't know like what could happen to us um at the end of the world i did go get my library card as you saw i went to the library so i will be reading volume five soon probably like as i wait for the pasta to boil um and the meatballs to cook because i feel like i got a really good chunk of wanderers done today and i will probably listen to it later so i think i want something like quick and fun and the walking dead is probably writing that to me. Hello, so I don't remember when I last updated you, but it is currently Wednesday, April 19th. I wanted to have everything I wanted to read done by today. This fucker has put me behind. I am currently almost done because it's 800 pages. I'm at page 500. So I have about 300 pages left. I definitely think I could finish this 
today that is my goal i have the day off because i had a dentist appointment this morning and in about an hour i have a blood test to do and then at around four or five i'm just going to visit my grandfather and then after that i'm going to visit my boyfriend's grandmother so i have quite a packed day but i want to read this um did i read anything this morning while i was walking from the dentist no while i was at the gym no um now laying around waiting to go to my blood test appointment no but i will persevere at this point i am almost in the book um have i been enjoying it I would say yes and no. I definitely think there are some interesting discussions in this book, specifically surrounding the pandemic. There was a huge revelation that I read last night, right before bed, um, that I think was actually quite clever in regards to the length of this book. It definitely does not need to be 800 pages, I can tell you right now. There is a lot of perspectives that I just don't think are important. Um, I think the story of the novel could have been portrayed regardless. And definitely Chuck Wending puts his political views um, within this book. And that's not necessarily a negative thing. I definitely agree with Chuck. <laughs> I definitely agree with Chuck. Oh my God, his name is so hard to say. I definitely agree with Chuck chuck wending about like his liberal views, but he's a lot more like violent <laughs> in this book than I need or wish to read. I also think um, despite being such a very progressive um, sounding person, he has a relationship between a 17 year old and a 25 year old in here, which I thought was a little weird um, coming from someone who's so outspoken <laughs> within this book about how he feels about the Republican Party in the United States. Um, this book was published in 2019 and I think it's really interesting the length of the white supremacists in this book and what they do um, when faced with a pandemic and how it was mirroring um pretty accurately what was going on um during COVID-19 in 2020 and 2021. Um, I don't know how to express it any other way without spoiling it. So I just hope it makes sense. I hope what I'm implying gets uh, across. I also really like that this book is bringing in technology and AI into the novel. I'm really enjoying the overall plot of the book. I just think that it did not need to be 800 pages and the middle portion of the book was definitely more of a slog. I really feel like I'm reading a Stephen King novel where the person writing it um, is very pretentious um, in their ideologies and their writing when I think the message could have equally come across without it being a thousand pages. That is my critique right now. I'm definitely going to try and finish this today. I also read volume six last night i don't remember when i updated you um but it was really really good uh like i said i'm going to from there on out rate it as a whole once i'm done at the dentist this morning i started reading volume seven and i will definitely have those two done today being realistic i think i'm most likely going to finish this vlog tomorrow i will be reading what moves the dead by t king fisher and i'm going to read the last volume of the walking dead which is volume eight today we have the wanderers to finish we have Walking Dead Volume 7. Then tomorrow we have What Moves the Dead and Walking Dead Volume 8. And then this vlog will be over and then I can post it because I have been waiting to post this. Right now, listening to this until I need to go to the doctor. Then when I'm back from the doctor, listening to this more because I could just read The Walking Dead before bed. So I'm not like 100% worried about that. But okay, you're taking too much of my time. Bye. Blood test successful. So now I'm going to make myself a smoothie um, to get some nutrients since... Quite a bit of blood was taken out. I'll probably listen to the audiobook while I make that smoothie. Okay, bye. Oh my god, you guys, I have to interrupt this scheduled programming because a package I've been waiting for since January has arrived. Let me turn on the light because I feel like a banshee. So, can you guys guess what it is? Oh my god, finally, I've been waiting for this. So I figured I might as well do a little unboxing, although I don't know how to open this box to be uh, quite honest. Okay. Oh my gosh. Ah! So we have the spoiler warning. Cool. So first I got a little VIN pin. Oh my god. I'm obsessed with this. She's so freaking cute, my little demon child. Next, I got, what is this? Oh, just, <laughs> just a Tress sticker, which I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. I don't really vibe with stickers. I don't know, I'll put it somewhere. Then we got, oh my God. I have the Tress bookmark. The quality of this 
is absolute insanity. And then, what the heck is this? I don't know what this is. I guess this is an epic bookmark. Cool. <laughs> I guess it'll go in my Cosmia books. Finally, what I have been waiting for. Oh, thank God this has come in today. It couldn't be happier. So if you guys follow like Brandon Sanderson at all, um, unrelated to this vlog, <laughs> I supported his Kickstarter for the special release covers of his books. This was the January book. Oh my gosh. This was the January book, but they had some problems um, with printing and whatnot. Oh, oh, I didn't know it was going to be green. He had a lot of like shipping delays, which is why I got some specialty stuff. Gorge. Wow. Love this. Um, so I'm very happy. I'm going to take an Instagram photo now to just show everybody that what I've been waiting for for a really long time has come. And while I'm doing this, I will be listening in my ears to the wanderers. Don't you worry about it. Hello. So I just got back from the gym, um, which is why I have my little headphones in uh, because I just like wearing them and like not hearing any sound or my thoughts, you know? But I did want to update everyone because I finished two books yesterday. It is Friday. This is going up later than expected. The YouTube algorithm will not be happy with me because I did not record anything else this week because I had big goals and I thought I was gonna complete and I didn't. So the first thing I finished was Wanderers by Chet Wendig. Um, I ended up giving this a three stars like I had expressed through talking before. I think Chuck Wendig has a lot of ideas and I think the aspect of horror that was in here that was blending the idea of zombies with AI was actually really interesting, but you only really understand the AI aspect and what's really going on with the zombie-ness of the novel. I feel personally like 400 pages in, like you're really halfway when you're starting to like, oh, I'm getting thoughts and ideas up here. I'm realizing what's going on. I think that did this book a disservice because it's so long and I think there's a lot in here that could have been cut out. Like I've mentioned before, Chet Wendig is very expressive with his political beliefs. I feel like a lot of it was being placed in here to kind of express that he is a good ally. And it reminded me a lot of Stephen King where there's aspects of this book that he's throwing in to be like, this guy is bad because he used slurs and he murders people. And it's like, okay, um, but there's a lot of nuance that we can have when we're discussing these things, especially if you're going to make the book this long. So the bad characters kind of felt repetitive because Chuck Wendig is trying to be very obvious that these characters are bad, for example. And a lot of the middle portion of the book is giving all the characters characterizations. I don't know how else to say it, like really adding to their character. And I think in a novel that's about like an apocalypse end of the world situation, like we don't really need to learn about everybody, you know, like it's okay. So I think this was overly too long. I like what Chuck Wendig was doing with the horror aspect of the novel, but overall this definitely felt like a slog to get through with no real satisfaction at the end of the book. So I did give this three stars. And of course, yesterday I managed to finish The Walking Dead volumes one to eight, and I really, really enjoyed my experience with this. I realized as I was reading them that I am just rereading them. I've read quite a bit of them. So a lot was coming back to me and that enjoyment was really nice. I was like, oh yes, I remember this. Oh yes, I remember this. Um, And last night I finished volume eight and when I saw a specific scene with um, Lori, Rick's wife, I was like, holy shit, I remember reading this for the first time and being like completely blown away. I gave two volumes five stars. The rest are in between a two to a four. So I think overall, I would probably give this first like compendium of eight volumes a 3.75 to a four, really. I'm gonna bump it up to a four actually because just my enjoyment of it was a lot of fun. And I think The Walking Dead is a really, really interesting series. There was definitely one volume in here that was a bit of a dud. I think that will progress um, as you read further into the series, which I plan to do because I actually had so much fun that I'm going to continue reading The Walking Dead series this year. But I think the overall story that Robert Kirkman is trying to tell is one that is very standard of zombie movie zombie media that we've seen before. So let's talk about how these books relate to The Last of Us. I think in regards to relatability, The Wanderers really related heavily, I think in an instance with The Last of Us because we definitely had a lot of discussions about cordyceps, which I'm now my number one fear um, because it's been brought up so much. I think also this idea of an empty landscape of people succumbing to this disease and a lot of people 
being terrified of it going into a more darker side of humanity than uh, the main characters that we're following, let's say. Also that Shanna is following her sister and wanting to protect her, doing anything to protect her and willing to stay there the whole time. Very reminiscent of Joel, but I don't feel like it's as concise as The Last of Us. And I think The Last of Us does it a bit better to tell this tale of two people bonding um, to reach a specific location. This definitely has that traveling like story, but I just think The Last of Us does it better, which is okay, you know, some books are just not for everybody and The Wanderers was an okay read. The Walking Dead, I think definitely has that zombie life, obviously, because they're dealing with that. I think The Walking Dead is a bit more interesting because you're really seeing a group of individuals survive, whereas like Joel and Ellie kind of have that with the town that the Joel's brother is living in, but they don't necessarily stay there, at least in the first Last of Us game and it's really about them two and them two surviving and them two with a goal and they have like a specific location that they need to get to which I think the Wanderers had that more. The Walking Dead is really just a group of people surviving. The end goal is to live but they don't have like a specific area that they need to go. They are encountering a lot of evil people because they don't have specific locations where they know people are, people who will help them. So they are trying to survive on their own which I think is a really interesting aspect and probably the most realistic but we do have to keep in mind that The Walking Dead is immediately after the zombie apocalypse whereas The Last of Us takes place a long time after because Ellie is born during the, the zombie, the infected apocalypse. But we are finally going to get to the last book and this book I will be finishing today because the audiobook is like four hours, which means it's two hours for me to read. But that is What Moves the Dead by T. King Fisher. I started listening to the first chapter yesterday, but I realized that I think I'm going to want to read it alongside the text simply because I was listening to it yesterday and I wasn't truly understanding the visuals and I don't know if that's the audiobook narrator's fault or just my brain was like I cannot listen to something else about mushrooms right now and I just started listening to YouTube videos at work. So I'm going to start this and finish this and then I'm going to update you and then this vlog will end because I have so much footage and I know it's going to take me a really long time to edit on top of it. You're telling me. Hello, welcome back. It is in fact the next day. Um, I knew I promised I was gonna update yesterday, but I didn't. I did manage to finish What Moves the Dead by T. King Fisher. I listened to this completely in one sitting besides those first like 20 pages that I listened to at work on Thursday. And I don't think I completely went into what this book is about, but it is essentially a retelling of The Fall of the House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe. Um, it basically follows a man who receives a letter from one of his friends um rickard i think his name was roderick roderick he receives a notice being like me and my sister are sick like you gotta come and see us and save us essentially and the story unfolds from there it's obviously like super creepy um and the reason i bought it is because it involves fungal infections which relates it directly to the last of us so in regards to my feelings about this this was an extremely creepy novella that just hit the spot. I'm not um, completely familiar with the original source material. Um, I may have read it when I was doing some homework on Edgar Allan Poe, but I don't really remember it. But from what I understand, you don't really need to know it because this is like a direct, everything that happens in this book happens in that short story. I loved Kingfisher's atmospheric writing and I was very creeped out by the overall setting of the book and the connections to those fungal infections. My only really major complaint about this book is that the beginning portion is quite boring and I think it takes a really long time to get into the novel. I was really worried that I wasn't going to enjoy this at all. I was very excited to pick up a T. King Fisher because I've just heard fantastic things about this author and so I was slowly like oh my god maybe they are not the writer for me but in the last 30% everything was really creepy and fascinating and it really turned my feelings um, away from disliking it and most of that comes from the fact that the fungal virus is more explained and the creepy atmospheric stuff becomes just overall a creepy Thing. and I ended up really enjoying that so I gave it a 3.5 stars because again that beginning portion is really slow and hard to get through and it wouldn't surprise me if a lot of people DNF the book because of that but if you get to the end I think it's really worth it it was really interesting really engaging and overall I enjoyed it if we're going to talk about how it relates to The Last of Us I think the only real thing here is that the fungal virus is working as a cordyceps virus and the fungal infection kind of takes over the animals that surround the house of Usher and maybe some of the individuals that live in the household. So that was really interesting, but otherwise there's nothing really there that relates to it or correlates to The Last of Us besides the fungal infection. But I think if you're looking for a weird, creepy, like fungal stuff, 
um I would recommend it. So that is the end of the vlog, but I kind of want to do a ranking of, first of all, which ones I enjoyed the most to the least, and then which ones relate to The Last of Us the most to the least. So in regards to my overall enjoyment, I think I'm going to put The Wanderers last. Um, it was very difficult to get into, very difficult for me to enjoy just because it was so long. Then I'm going to put What Moves the Dead. Then I would probably put the road the walking dead and then the girl with all the gifts will go at the top you know what i think in terms of enjoyment i really did like my experience with the walking dead more so i'll put it more like this and then for what is more relatable what moves the dead last i think we're gonna have to go with the walking dead because even though it is a zombie apocalypse that is where kind of the similarities between the Walking Dead and The Last of Us are. I would probably put The Wanderers because it definitely has that zombie experience. It definitely has a person walking with someone else in order to find a solution for the end of the world. Um, but that's where that stops. Then we, I would put The Road because it has that father figure trying to just make the younger child bigger survive in an apocalypse so that definitely relates to the last of us and then i think the one that relates the most is the girl with all the gifts because it has that fungal virus it has the children being born within this world and with that fungal virus um being the last hope for humanity while also having adults try to help and save melanie when they have to kind of venture out into the real world so this is how i would relate them in accordance to their closeness to the last of us so that's it those are all of the books i read for this vlog i had a really great time i realized in this vlog that i really like zombie stories um which i think was pretty apparent because having reread all of the walking dead which means i had read it in the past and enjoyed it playing the last of us being interested by these stories and the discussions that they're having about humanity and not just about the horror of zombies. I think I discovered something new that I probably will be continuing my reread of The Walking Dead and catching up to wherever I stop. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed the second installment of reading books like my favorite video games. If you've read anything that you feel like relates to The Last of Us, please let me know down below because I would love to consume it. I have heard that Mexican Gothic has a mushroom aspect to it so i think that, that could be really interesting to read but if there's anything else please let me know down below and if you would like to follow me on any of my other social medias i do leave a link down below to my twitter goodreads and instagram if you would like to follow me there and because it is the end of the video please do not forget to like subscribe and ring the notification bell it does wonders for my channel it makes me feel really good and that's it um i never know how to end these things so i will see you next time okay bye